welcome back to the Willow Run Life. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about my Mayo Clinic experience and then some tips and tricks that I have for when you're going and if this is your first time. So let's get into it. Okay, so starting with a bird's eye view of my experience there and kind of what happened. We arrived on a Sunday, we left on a Saturday, and there were appointments from Monday through Friday of that whole week. I would say Monday and Friday probably ended up being the lightest, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday ended up being the heaviest. I met with a lot of providers at the beginning of the week, and then the week picked up and progressively gained pace. The more testing and the more people they wanted me to meet with. I went in to meet with neurology for a POTS evaluation and then rheumatology as well for an inquiry into some of my symptoms. And then I left also meeting with endocrinology, physical medicine and rehabilitation, and then an appointment for medical genetics at a later point. And neurology ultimately contacting me later recently and saying that they want me to see cardiology as well. So expect to see a lot of departments across your one visit or across multiple visits or telehealth if that's possible. I would say go in prepared for the flood of information that's going to hit you. You're going to be meeting with a lot of different people across the board that are seeing you for the first time and have new perspectives on things. And that can be really overwhelming at first if you're meeting with a lot of people who you don't know. It can be very emotional and it can be kind of scary. So have a support member with you just in case anything should happen. I also think it's good to have just another person there in general to listen, to hear what care providers have to say and to make sure you don't miss anything yourself. So my family was with me on this trip. I know other people that go with their spouses and I think that would be a great idea as well. Just make sure that you have a support person there that can help you and have your back whenever you need that. I went to Mayo Clinic specifically because I could not get into any local providers in a reason reasonable amount of time. And with law school, I need to get a lot of things done at one time without having things spread out over a year or multiple years of testing. So at Mayo Clinic, the joke is always that in one week you can get one year of testing done, which I honestly think is accurate because of everything that I had done in that week. So I can just show you, I have my patient appointment guide with me and this was just Friday's appointment guide. I had a bone density screening in the morning and then I had a stress test and a meeting with physical medicine and rehabilitation and Thursday was like absolutely nuts in terms of appointments. So you can do a lot at one time, which is really helpful when you're in graduate school or in a rigorous academic experience where you know if you went during the school year, you wouldn't have time to do things. So I, I highly recommend Mayo Clinic for that reason of just how efficient they are and how well everything runs. And then also their care providers are just top quality. Quality. I mean, they really care about you. They're passionate about what they do. There's very few stories of very negative experiences there. And I think that speaks a lot too when they're so beloved in the chronic illness community when we've had so much of emotional trauma. I mean, I know all of us have had some sort of bad experience with a doctor or medical provider and to go to a place where you know that that will be taken care of is just absolutely amazing. And the fact that you can trust people and that you don't have to worry about it, that they have your back as doctors is a fantastic feeling. So that was kind of my bird's eye view of things. Let me get into the tips and tricks that I have for going. So number one is going to be advocate for yourself and stay proactive in your care. Even though they're top quality and they are the best of the best, always advocate for yourself. Always speak up for something that you want or you feel that you need. Make sure you have a list of questions and a list of things that you're looking to achieve on the trip so that everybody is on the same page and that all your goals get met. I would also say along with that, bring all your medical records. A lot of providers want your medical records when you go and see them. As a first time patient with a history of chronic illness, they're going to want to look at your whole history and to see if they have anything additional additional tad or if it sheds light on some things. So I would definitely say bring your medical records. It can be hefty, it can be heavy. I had a big binder, but it is immensely helpful in them and for you as well. And I would say too, if you have a long medical history and a long medication list, to type up a document with all of that information included, and then to print out a couple of copies and give that to your care providers. I found that it helped a lot. It helped me stay on track when they asked me, well, you know, when did these symptoms start? And it helps them kind 
kind of make sure that they don't miss anything as well. Going off of that, my tip number two would be to stay open-minded to what they have to say. Like I said before, you're getting flooded with a lot of information at the same time. It can be a bit of a whirlwind experience and you can have different opinions about different pieces of information that they're giving you. You just never know what they're going to say. And sometimes you can get an answer that you didn't expect, but can really explain all the things that are happening to you. And if you don't stay open-minded to that, you can be a little resistant to it. So, you know, advocate, be proactive, but also hear what they have to say as well. My tip number three is a little more practical, getting into just the practical day-to-day -day things. And that would be staying at a hotel on the subway line. So when I say subway line, it's not what we typically think of in a train subway situation, like in New York or Chicago or DC, for example. Their subway in Minnesota is underground walkways built especially for the winter because it gets so cold there that you can't walk outside from one building to another, especially in cities like Rochester and Minneapolis. So what they've done is they've built an underground walkway with AC and then heating in the winter that's fully carpeted, it has security cameras, it's gorgeous and immaculate. You can get anywhere on the Mayo campus that you need to be in an easy, accessible way for walking, wheelchairs, mobility aids, it's fantastic. And along with that, you can stay at a hotel on that line and save money in parking. So if you're at a hotel on that line, you don't have to drive to the Mayo Clinic, park there, which I heard can run upwards of like $30 a day and spend that money. So you, it ends up being a cost effective measure as well. My tip number four is related to that and it's when you're staying on that subway line, try to find a hotel with suite style kind of rooms. Basically meaning that there's a kitchen or a microwave and a refrigerator. Also is a great way of saving money because you can buy groceries at the beginning of the week before it gets really crazy. And then you can heat up frozen meals or prepared meals for lunch because there's not a lot of lunch options at the Mayo Clinic. The cafeteria is under construction and it's kind of eh. And then there are other like fast casual restaurants further down the subway line but it can take a while to get there and back if you have testing that's pretty close together. Whereas most of the hotels on the subway line are very, very close to the Mayo buildings. You can just go back to your hotel, heat up some food, and then come back and be prepared for your next appointment. If you're anyone like my mom or myself where you have a sensitive stomach, it can also help ensure that you don't have stomach ache all the time because you're eating foods that you know agree with you well. Going off of that, tip number five, my last tip would be to stay comfortable and to bring things that you know are comfortable no matter what. And this is especially pertaining to shoes. So I made the mistake of bringing some shoes that I thought would be so great because they're sneakers and they have good reviews and they seem cushiony, so they'll be great. I end up walking out of my hotel room two feet and turning around because I already had blister. So bring shoes that you know are comfortable, that you've worn before and work well for the amount of miles that you're gonna be putting in walking from one place to another on the campus. I ended up wearing my Birkenstocks for most of the trip and then I had a pair of flip-flops that I wore a couple of times too. And then clothing as well. Bring clothing that is comfortable. So being a law student who loves fashion, I wore a lot of like mom jeans with cute tops and a sweater or a lot of dresses. And I found that that worked really well. The temperature in the Mayo Clinic is for me, great. It's like the perfect temperature for me where I don't get too hot or too cold, but I always had a sweater with me just in case. And I would say, you know, be prepared to be sitting and up for a long time, you know, to not have things that are like pressing on any areas that you may be sensitive. Those are my top tips. There are also little things to like bring a snack, make sure you have your meds on you at all times, have your insurance card and your ID card. But I think we all kind of know those things at this point. Those were the big tips and tricks that I learned that I kind of wish I knew ahead of time or things that I started to learn as I worked further and further into the week. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. You can click the little icon over here or the little button down there. And I hope you have a great day. Bye everybody.